You know, if you are talking to people about salvation, for example, they tell you, you mean the five point something billion people who are not Christians will go to hell? Yes. They will. The Bible said concerning Noah. It said because of Noah alone, his whole generation was judged. It was one man against a generation. And God was not moved that the crowd against one man, he would rather go with the crowd. No. It was not a factor. It was about the government that flowed from his spirit. And so even though Noah was one man against a generation, God stood with Noah and the whole earth was wiped away. That's how rigid a kingdom operates. If eight family was spared and the whole world perished, the God that did it before can do it again. <laughs> you know, people don't know kingdom. The power of a king is tied to his alignment to his own word. And so a king can banish his own son. He will go home and weep. But his word will stand. That's how kingdoms operate. The king himself is under the law. I'm using the word kingdom so you understand the severity, the rigidness of its operation. This is not a political setting where you vote things in or out. This is not a democratic setting where majority carries the vote. This is a government that is regulated by a monarch. And because it's regulated by a monarch, your opinion, if in disalignment, does not count. It is not a democracy. It's not based on popular, popular opinion. It's based on the will of the king. And so you must understand what the king wants, align with it for you to make progress. If you know it, you will discover there's no bias. I was doing a series recently on marriage. And I said the husband and the wife are not friends. They can build friendship, but they are not friends. Friendship exists between husband and wife, but they are not friends. The husband is the Lord. That is kingdom. You know, if you bring it to contemporary society, they can't understand it. But the scripture did not say the husband is his wife's friend. He said the husband is Lord. And he said, as Sarah called him Lord. He said, you too, you are daughters of Sarah. So your husband is Lord. And in case you say it's an allegorical statement, it's a figure of speech. He went to Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22. He said, as Christ is Lord over the church. He said, that is... <laughs> you know, the church is not the friend of Jesus. But there is friendship between Jesus and the church. As the church is submitted to Christ, he said, that is how the wife is subject to the husband. So, in case you say it's a figure of speech, it's not. But you see, if you are in a democratic regime, you can take it to Facebook. And begin to argue on Facebook. You can even pick one or two experiences that are not right. Because some husbands are boys. They are not men. <laughs> and so because a boy maltreated his wife, you can use that boy as your justification. And say this boy killed his wife. This boy oppressed his wife. Even if 90% of husbands who unfortunately are boys maltreat their wives, it doesn't change the law. It's called kingdom. And we are in light. We are not trained by the American government or their philosophy. We are not trained by the civilization of England. We are trained by Zion. And so even if they change the constitution in America, the Bible cannot be changed. It says heaven and earth will pass away. Not one jot or tittoo of scriptures can change. And so no matter how they redefine it, the husband is Lord, as Christ is Lord over the church. And then when it came to the husband, he said, love your wife. But he said, love is not a feeling. In case you assume that it's how you feel towards her, I'm not talking feeling. He said, the love in this context is self-denial. He said, as Christ died for the church, 
He said, that is how you will die for your wife. That means the husband that looks as if he has authority is actually the weaker vessel in the marriage. You wait. <laughs> and he told the husband, he said, if you don't relate to her with that understanding, he said, your prayers will not be heard. That means your priesthood is under attack if you don't relate with your, husband, your wife as a slave. In the position of self-denier, your priesthood is under attack. Now, when you are defining it from the realm of men, you will actually use husband and wife so that we understand. But when you go into light, the definition is higher because it's about government. It's about authority. Because when God pioneered the institution called marriage, his priority is not about a man and a woman. Because it was Paul that went into the spirit and began to teach us why marriage was designed the way it was designed. And when Paul told the woman to submit to the man, he said, because of the angels. That means before men were created, God was dealing with spirits and angels. And one of the things that define the civilization of heaven is authority. But you see, time and again, angels rebelled against the authority of God. Because once upon a time, Lucifer said, I will exalt my throne. Because God gave him opportunity. He is a dominion. If you look at the keda of the spirit realm, you have thrones. You have dominions. You have principalities. You have powers. Then you have messengers. The messengers in light are called angels. The messengers in darkness are called demons. So, Lucifer was a dominion. And a dominion is a prince that has a territory. That's why when God created man, he created him as a dominion. He said, let them have dominion. And because man is a dominion, he gave him the earth as his jurisdiction. The jurisdiction of Lucifer was one third of the angels. And so because he had the privilege of authority in Zion, he could wield authority. He now became creative. And he thought, if one third of the angels are subject to me, I can overthrow God. So he doesn't understand how to handle authority. And so they said there was no space, no place found for you. And he was cast from Zion. And so when God saw that the principalities did not understand authority, he now created a school of the spirit in Eden. And he put a man and a woman there to become teachers of principalities. And so when he told the man, be Lord, he wanted the man to show what it means to handle authority. So that the dominions in heaven, we understand that authority does not make you powerful. Authority actually brings you under government. Because the only way you can wield authority is through self-denial. If you think of yourself, you can't handle authority. And so the husband is actually a teacher in the spirit that trains spirit on how to exercise authority. And that exercise is through self-denial. But the, when the man couldn't do it, Jesus had to come and marry the church. So he taught princes how to wield authority by dying for the church. And when he told the woman submit, it was not an attempt to marginalize her. Because there are two sides to authority. There is the size of exercise and there is a tide of submission. So he gave the man the size of, side of exercising and he gave the woman the side of submission. So both of them are actually in the realm of light, not husband and wife. They are teachers of authority in the school of the spirit. One teaching how to exercise and another teaching how to submit.